this is the first time I'm, we're doing something like this. Um, usually we do like usual services, but I was thinking that uh, people needed to change. Lives needs to change. Uh, I I stopped believing in church as usual. You just go to church, everybody's excited, you go back home and that's it. I believe that it's possible for you to go to church and be transformed and change. If you want to change, it's possible for you to be in church and you hear something that just, you know, that that's, that kind of strikes a bell and say, okay, I think this is where I'm missing it and this is what I'm going to do to be a better person. And today, I want to say something uh, that you probably have been hearing in other ways, but I want to be able to bring it home to you so you understand um, what words mean. I target words medium of exchange. Usually when you want to buy stuff, we all know that money is a mode of exchange. That the value or the worth of the things you want is placed on it by the amount of money you gave to get it. So money is a mode of exchange. We have different currencies. There are even some currencies that are weightier than some currencies. When I came to the United States, uh, a dollar, we use Naira in Nigeria. A dollar when I came in here was a hundred and fifty Naira. So for every hundred and fifty Naira that people work for back home in Nigeria, it's just one dollar here. At that time, that 150, you know, can, can do a lot. If you give somebody 150, then, if you give a child 150, they will say you're spoiling that child. Then. Today, the same $1 is about 560 naira. Now, so, if you take your money and you go live in Nigeria, you're going to live like a king. Um, a king. I mean, you'll be able to, you'll get everything you want. When I came here initially, it was, life was a bit difficult here because you could afford a lot of stuff back home. I had a maid. I had a washerman. I had a driver. I just needed to wake up. Since there's nothing that can wake you up, no machine to wake you up. That's all you need to do. Just wake up and become you. You're sure that your food is being cooked. And then it's coming into your bedroom if you choose not to go to the dining table. You're sure that you just need to dress up and get downstairs. And the driver is already warming your car. You just get in, he takes you there. And so I got in here and I went to school. I, I went to TSU first, and I was looking for parking space. And that was weird for me, because I never needed to look for a parking space. I just get up, in, I get down in front of the reception. It's not my business where the driver parks the car. When it, I'm about leaving, I just text him and say, I'm, I'm coming out. And the car is waiting again. As I get into the car, it takes me to the house. I don't care where he drops the car, and I don't care when he washes the car. And so I got here, and I was like, what is going on here? As a matter of fact, I went one day to the admin office and went to ask if I could park where the professors were parking. And they all started laughing. They said, no, you can't. I said, but it's closer to the class. They say, yes, but they are professors. I'm like, what's the difference between them and me? Why can't I park here? How much will it take for me to park here? They said, no, it doesn't work that way. So I asked, where do I park? They not told me to go and park somewhere. And when I was going, I was like, but the class, classes are down there. So you park your car and you start sweating. By the time you get in the classroom, you're like, you're so tired. And I 
ask myself, what kind of life is this? How much will it take to get a driver here? So I asked somebody, somebody said, you know why people don't have drivers here? All your money. Looks like you just go work and take all the money and give it to it and show them. You say, that's what you do. So everybody has learned to do what they've got to do here. I wake up in the morning, there is no food anywhere. What am I saying? It's, I'm talking about money and the value of money. The value that we have for money back home is there from the value here. It's much more. You need more to be able to do stuff here. But if you take your money and go back there, so that is to say, money here is not the same as money elsewhere. It's totally different. And that also depends on what you want. Money is a mode of exchange. You want anything, you just need money to give, and then you get whatever you want. The same thing goes for words. Words are medium of exchange. We are either buying with the words or we are selling with the words. Words, the medium of exchange, just like money. Now, the question is, what are you buying? Assets or liabilities with your words? And I will tell you why I said you're using words. You know, you're buying stuff with your words. If you ask me, if you look at me and call me an idiot, you have sold something to me. Because I'm going to get that word and all day I'm asking myself if I'm actually an idiot or not. You have made me something with your words. And because you have said that to me, you will only be able to reap the reward of an idiot. Because I'm totally going to act like an idiot to you. So, you have used that exchange mode to purchase something for yourself that you will never lack. If you call somebody on the road while driving, if you call somebody crazy, you will buy crazy. People around us or who you are today is as a result of the word exchange. Things that you have heard over time makes who you are today. The people around you are who they are because of the word exchange. If you validate people around you over and over and over again, you're going to be reaping the seed or the reward of validation. They want to do good because you keep validating them. That is what you're using your words to do. You're buying an asset. You want a child to do well, you keep talking about what you want to see and not what you are seeing. That's what faith is. Faith calls those things that be not as though they were and they become. I am a living proof of the power of words. I speak over my children every day whether they are there or not because that's what I want. I've always learned to say to them, you are above, you are not beneath, you are the head, you are not the tail, you are the first, you are not the last. You have an excellent spirit, you are a positive influence. I say over and over and over. When they're going to school, when they're going for, you know, they're going to take exams, instead of running around for pencil and saying, okay, did you read this? No, I was saying, so who are you? So they tell me they're above, they're not beneath. I'm the head, I'm not the tail. That's who you are. And it has always worked for them. I'm a living proof that the only way you can transform your children is by what you do with the words of your mouth. 
The only way you can live with your spouse in peace and harmony is what you do with that mode of exchange called words. And the more you say, the more you reap. I am not saying say, you know, suppose somebody told me one day, said, do you want me to lie? I said, no, I'm not saying you should lie. I'm saying you should use faith. Faith is not seeing is believing. Faith is believing is seeing. You speak it forth and then it comes to pass. God came down and the Bible says there was darkness on the earth. Gross darkness. There was everywhere was thick in the book of Genesis. And God was like, what is happening here? And God said, let there be light. And light came. You only get light when you don't argue with darkness. If you come into a room and there is no light, what do you do? You turn on the light. You don't begin to speak to the darkness. And say, oh, why is this room damp? I mean, there should be light here. That's what people do. Why is it? You turn on the light. People around you are not acting right. You make it right by using the weapon of words that you have. The more you say it, the more you see it. The more you say it, the more you see it. Why? The words that you speak, they affect your brain. And then the brain affects your mouth. So it's a cycle and it begins to form your life. That's why research studies has been around speaking positivity to people who are ill to get them to recover faster. If you keep saying what you're saying, you will keep multiplying what you're saying. The Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. When you're having a headache, let it not come from your mouth. You are strong. That's what the Bible says you say. I feel strong. And the more you speak it, the more it becomes. Why? The world was framed by the word of God. What are you buying? And what are you selling with your words? I say to liability. Your words are valuable just as your heart is. The Bible says that of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. If you speak, I know who you are. When you open your mouth and you say something, that is who you are. Because everybody speaks from what is stored up here in their heart. You are exactly what you speak. And so the Bible says that if you want a fruit to be good, make the tree good. If you want to speak right, then you have to be right yourself. You have to take time to make sure that you're good to make your fruit good. Why? Your thoughts are you and you are your thoughts. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. That's what the Bible says. You become what you say and you are what you say. If you say, I can never make it, you will never make it. If you say it is hard, it becomes hard. If you say, I feel like dying, you eventually die. If you say, when I wake up in the morning, I just get peace, you will always be an angry, grumpy person. If you say, this is the day that the Lord has made, I'm going to rejoice in this day, you will have joy that day. If you call your spouse lazy, your spouse becomes lazier. If you say your spouse is stupid, your spouse becomes more stupid. Whatever you say is what you see. And the more you say it, the more you see it. If you say, I don't have any money, you are going to be dead broke. You say, what if I don't have money? Speak what you want to see and don't speak what you see. I am intelligent. My mind is a lot. I say this every time. When we're in the car and I'm driving my daughter to school, we, we, we make the confession. Today is a good day. I have favor with God and with man. I am loved by my teachers and my friends. 
I am the best in math, ELA, social studies, sciences, and all that I do. She says it every day. And so she goes and comes back without good grades because you become what you say. Your words, they're a mode of exchange for you. What you say is what you see. What determines the quality of your words, when you speak, when you speak it, the time, how you speak it, where you speak it, and what you speak. Like I said, the money here is different from the money back home. It, they're different, but they both money. They're buying stuff. So money is not the same everywhere. It doesn't have the same value everywhere. The value of your words, the quality of your words is when you speak it. Let me give an example. Sometimes, you know, you've heard over and over that when the woman is complaining, she's not asking you to fix. She's saying, keep your mouth shut and just listen. I'm not asking you to go and start telling me what I should do. I'm not asking you for counsel. I'm not asking you for you to, you know, let me know whether I am smart or not. No, just listen and be there. So, and the Bible says that there is a time to speak and there is a time to keep quiet. A man told me each time a husband wife starts speaking, after talking, he will ask a question, which is very smart. Do you just want me to listen or you want me to do something about it? Never speak when you're not asked to speak. When to speak. It takes wisdom to be discerning but when to speak. Do you see some people, when people are talking, all of a sudden they will just open their mouth and just say something that's out of whatever is being discussed. It's because they have lack wisdom. Sometimes I want to post something on a group chat. The first thing I want to know is what is being said on the group chat first. So I just don't go and, you know, post something. There was a time somebody was, they were talking about um, somebody lost her father and people were just making comments about, you know, condolences, I'm so sorry, and, and they were saying all manner of things. All of a sudden, a post popped up of somebody that says, look at me, I'm enjoying in a restaurant. Obviously, the person does not know what's going on on the chat. She just wanted to share something. That is foolishness. There is when to say something. When somebody is talking, don't jump into their throat. That is how your words can buy an asset, can, can get something good for you. There is a how to speak. That gives quality to your word. You don't speak just because you have words formed in your broker's area, in your brain. Oh, I know what to say. There's always how to say things. There is a tone. There is a body language that makes you get the result that you want. How to say things. Somebody, there is a, there's a, there's a proverb, an adage in Africa that says that sorry has a male and it has a female. I can tell you, oh, sorry. And you're like, what do you mean? You said the word sorry, but the how of that sorry does not cut it. There's a how to say things. So you don't just say things. So the how means you have to ponder and say, so how do I get this thing out? So I am heard. So I am understood. So it doesn't come off as rude or something. There is a how. And that's what we teach people, what we call the I statements. That when you're upset, use the primary emotional languages. And I'm going to be showing you what that is. Use the sad. Instead of saying, I am pleased, I'm disgusted. Why would you even do that? I can't even believe it. After all these years, you're still saying something this dumb. 
You're buying for yourself a liability, not an asset. Because eventually, you're not going to get what you're looking for, which is probably an apology. You're going to get the other person to get defensive. You can't decide to use your money or your words the way you like. Don't throw it. If you go to a store and you want to buy something, And after getting all the groceries you need, you take the money and throw it at the girl at the register. What do you think will happen to you? It's still money. The person says, how, how, you say, how much is this? And the person says, oh, $50. You take the $50 and throw it. If you're not arrested, something else will happen to you. That is the same way you'll know what is saying, but you're throwing it at the other person. There is the words of, there's a book that says, you know, apology languages for everybody. There is a way to present stuff that makes people know you are really serious about it. I tell people there are many things you, you'll buy with money, I'll buy with my words. You, you, you may have a friend that has probably a car and the car the guy wants to sell the car and you go to the guy and the guy says, well, if you can give me such and so amount, I'll give it to you. Somebody else goes there and, you know, put himself or herself together and pre give a presentation and the same person says, you want the car? Take it. So one buys it with money, another person buys it with words, good words. There's absolutely nothing you can get in this world that money can purchase that good words cannot. It's just for you to know that the reason why you've not been getting favor and getting things that you need from life is because you have not been intentional about how to use your words. How to use your words. There is what um, um, Gottman, John Gottman calls the form, um, the formula of the apocalypse. He says there are four main, he says, uh, four horsemen. He says there is um, criticism, there is defensiveness, um, there is content, and there's stonewalling. He says that whenever you critique people, what you get back is defensiveness. If you call me out on something and you call me out in a way that I feel attacked you leave me no option but to defend myself no option come here why did you do this you always do this I'll say I don't always do that it was a mistake everybody can do that and then you get angrier and then I get more defensive. So at the end of the day, what you get is noise. Anger. Because you did not use your words the way you should use those words. If you use the word never, or you use the word always, people will always be defensive. Because if you say, you never do this, the person is thinking, what do you mean by that? Yesterday I did it. What do you mean by I never do it? So the person gets the fancy. It's just natural. If you say you always do this, the person is like, no, I always do that. The person gets the fancy. You, do, you, know, you, you have the words to say, but you're not using it the right way. If I look at somebody, if I look at my child, and maybe she comes home with maybe a C or something. And I look at the C and I say, that I've told you to read your books. If you don't read your books, you will always get this. My child is going to say, Mom, but I got 90 last semester. What is it always about? So instead of saying, okay, I'm going to do better, which is something I want to hear, I'm not going to hear that. But if I say, 
oh my god you got a C this time okay it's okay because you got 90 the other time I'm sure if you read next term you will do better of course she doesn't have to be defensive she'll just say okay and go and she will actually do better the way you use your words that tell me what you get and so you have to learn how to use your words and it's not just with people even with God God knows what you need but he wants you to use words he wants you to pray he wants to see how you're going to petition him you don't go to God and say you should know better God that I need that thing what have you been doing nobody does that and God is like, if you can't do that with me, why do it with other people? I created them in my image and after my likeness. Where to speak also matters. If you speak to people in presence of other people, they'll react. The same thing you will say in private. If you say it in the open, you're not going to get the good result. Because we are different. When others are involved, we're all different. If you tell me, my husband tells me in the bedroom, if I'm saying something, he says, come on, shut up. I'll laugh. I'll say, no, I'm not going to shut I'm going to say what I have to say. And I will take it as a joke. If we're having a dinner with friends and he looks at me and says, come on, shut up. I want to ask him, I, is everything okay with you? Why would you tell me shut up? Why? Because all of a sudden, the place and the people involved, they've changed the meaning of the words. So you can't do that. My husband will not talk to me in presence of the kids. If I'm doing certain things and feels it's not okay, he will hold me from the back and you start and take me to the bedroom and say, let's let it rest. We'll visit again. It's not a time or place to say it. And I'll say, okay. But I can imagine him saying, in presence of the kids, you don't, don't, why, don't talk to the kids that way. Then I'm going to be mad. Why? That's not a place to rebuke me. I see people rebuke the kids and you know in public, and I'm like, ah, the students are going to rebel very soon. Very soon. You don't do that. There is where to speak, and there is also what to speak. Always look for the least offensive in the seemingly group. The words you speak, whenever it has to be negative, let it be the least of the negative, you know? There are different things. If you're angry, you can say, what you said yesterday, you know, made me angry. It's, everybody understands that. You can also say, when you talked yesterday, you were stupid. You're still saying the same thing. You can also say you sounded like a fool when you spoke. You're still saying the same thing. You can say anytime you say like talk like that, you disgust me. You're still saying the same thing. Foolish people always look for the words that are the worst in a similar group. For some dumb reasons, they want to show how angry they are. Unfortunately, you buy yourself more anger because you're not going to get the response that you're supposed to get. Somebody can also say, when you spoke yesterday, you made me sad. We're still saying the same thing. But that is communicating how I feel because I need you to see how I felt when you said it. You cannot be defensive when I say that. 
Because I am not talking about you. I'm talking about how I feel. You can't say, no, you can't feel like that. Because that's my own feeling. But if you say, I said something dumb, you attacked me. This is no longer your feeling. You are saying, I am this. And I have a right to say, I'm not. Don't call me that. So do you see the reason why people argue and fight? You can use your words to buy peace of mind. You can use your words to buy a fruitful relationship. You can laugh all day with anybody if you are schooled in words. If you know what to speak, you know when to speak, you know how to speak, and you know where to speak. It becomes a good mode of exchange for you to buy yourself an asset and no liability. I talk to people all day long and sometimes I'm just folding my hands and I'm looking at them and my head I'm saying, if only he can phrase that well, if only she can phrase that well, if only he can shut up now, if only she can just wait, they won't have a fight, they won't need to be here. But you need to learn and be intentional. And I will get there. How do you get to that point? I want you to say something to yourself right now. Say good things will happen to me, in me, for me, and through me. Say it again. Good things will happen to me, in me, for me, and through me. One more time. Good things will happen to me, in me, for me, and through me. For this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice in it. See, you can't say this in the morning and not be good all day. So I'm, I'm, I told you to repeat it because that's what I wanted to be doing so you can believe it. The more you say it, the more you believe it. And the more you believe it, the more you leave it. So that when somebody wants to get you upset, you remember that good things is going to happen to me. I'm not going to mess it up. It just shapes you for that day. The Bible says in Proverbs 22, 11, it says, He who loves purity of heart and whose speech is gracious will have the king as his friend. The king means anybody, friends, people in authority. If your words are gracious, people want to be around you. If you speak well, you're respectful when you're talking, you're considerate. The Bible says you will have a king as your friend. The Bible says in Matthew 12, 33 to the 7, say, either make the tree good, and its fruit good. Or make the tree bad. And its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers. How can you speak good. When you are evil. For out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure. Brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give account for every careless word they speak. For by your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you will be condemned. That was Jesus speaking in Matthew 12. You're justified by your words. The Bible says, for every idle word you speak, you're not just speaking to people and going scot free. It's been recorded against your name in heaven. Every idle word you speak. People think they can just open their mouth. I, I used to laugh about something I say when I was younger. Somebody says something to me. I look at him and say, You're speaking like that because you don't have to pay an airtime. Why people speak well on radio is because they are paying for airtime. People speak whatever they want to speak 
because they not you don't have to pay for it you know because if you if you're on radio you, you know you have like 30 minutes you put everything together to be able to deliver but because we think we're not paying we open our mouth and we just speak but what I've come to tell you today is that you will pay for that everything you speak to people you will pay for that which you're speaking. Not just here on earth, but God says every idle word, you're going to give account. So you can't just decide you want to speak. Always be cognizant of what you're speaking. Be intentional about speaking life to people. And don't just speak because of the way you feel. I will tell you why you speak the way you speak. James 1, 19 to 21 says, Know these, my beloved brothers. Let every person be quick to hear, slow to speak and slow to anger. For the anger of man does not produce the righteousness of God. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your soul. James 1, 19, 21. I was at the bar, a restroom one day and I heard a woman talking. She was talking to a child. That woman spoke like four sentences. And in the sentences, I heard like 10 F words. When the girl saw me, she froze. All of a sudden, the presence of a third party made it obvious that it was wrong. I looked and said, what? That child is going to grow up also doing, saying the same nonsense. Because she, she will think that is the way we roll, that's the way we live. I wanted to talk to her, but I mean, we're in a society where people are free to say whatever they want to say. But I felt so bad. Why? She's sowing terrible seeds into the child. Because she's angry? Why? We have to be intentional about what we say. Especially to kids. We have to be intentional. You're not just saying them. Don't think you're not paying airtime. You'll pay dearly for it. Because you are recreating those children. The words, this world was framed by the word of God. Everything you see around you is your words that is framing them. So don't blame anybody if you're not getting the result you want to get. Why? You're creating something with the words of your mouth. The Bible says in James 1.26, If anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is worthless. That is to say, don't tell me you're a Christian if you have not tamed your tongue. That is what the time is. It's not going to church. It's not carrying the Bible. The Bible says here, whatever you claim that you're doing, it doesn't have any value if you're not able to bridle your tongue. If you don't say things that glorify people. If your words are not seasoned with salt. Don't claim that you are a Christian. For we all stumble in many ways. And if anyone does not stumble in what he says, then he is a perfect man. Able also to bridle his whole body. If you can control what you say, then you can have self-control on your body. This is the scripture. The Bible says in Proverbs 18, 20 to 21, From the fruit of a man's mouth, his stomach is satisfied. He is satisfied by the yield of his lips. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Life and death. When you speak, you're either speaking life or you're speaking death. They're the power of the tongue. You are able to control things around you with your mouth. Numbers 14, 28, God speaking. He says, say to them, as I live, declares the Lord, 
what you have said in my hearing, that is what I'll do. Good or bad. This is God speaking. So prayer is not just, oh, do good things for me. God says, I'm listening all the time. Every, anything you say, that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't matter if you put in Jesus' name behind it or not. He will say, oh my God, I am so dead. You are so dead. If you say, okay, you know, this thing is not going to work. It's so not going to work. My kids come and tell me, mommy, we have abundance of so so and so in the fridge. And they get it, abundance. I let them know, don't never say, oh, something is finished. I can never do this. But you can do all things through Christ that strengthens you. Always say what you want to see. Don't say what you are seeing. That was the idea behind God changing the name of Abraham to Abraham. He needed children. God said, you've got to be, keep speaking children. Call yourself father of many nations. So when people call Abraham, it means they're calling father of many nations because he did not have a child. And God wanted to have a child. God was teaching us a principle. What you want to see is what you say. I don't say to a doctor that, you know, I am sick. I say, I have a challenge in my leg. Because I don't want to say what I don't want to see. I have some challenges. If you don't have money, say you are expecting some money. Don't say, I don't have money. I am so broke. For what you say is what you see. I don't tell my children you are so, you know, I say things like, you need Jesus in your life. So they know what I mean by that. If they do something much more, I'll say you need more of Jesus. And they'll start laughing. Some of them will say, Mom, I already have Jesus in my life. That's a way to let them know, I'm so upset with what you've just done now. Instead of now going and acting. I tell people, when you act crazy, get somebody to put you on camera. You will not buy your own movie. When you're angry and you're talking, let somebody tape you. Let them play your life to you. That's five minutes of craziness. You will not want that uploaded anywhere. Because you will see how crazy you look and sound. The Bible says the anger of man does not walk in righteousness. Now unto him who is able to do far more abundantly than what you ask or think. According to the power and work within you. God does not just do what you ask. He also does what you think. So I'm not just talking about what you say. For the abundance of the heart, your mouth speaks. I'm talking about what you put in your heart. Because that's how you speak. You're, you say what you're filled with. So if you want to speak right, begin to fill your heart with good things. Now, there's this thing... We usually use during, so you can just I'm, just, I'm just gonna come and share. It's called the feeling wheel. I just wanted to, for a moment, check what you do. If you look at the, the feeling wheel, you'll see why we do what we do. Now, in the center, that's when you see, that's actually the way you feel. You are either mad or you're sad or you're scared or you're joyful or you're powerful or you're peaceful. So, when you see yourself, you know, saying hurtful things, you're actually just mad 
or when you see yourself very enraged, you're just mad. And sometimes you're not mad at people, you're mad at yourself because of something that's happened. And then you become, you know, sometimes you're jealous, sometimes you're selfish, sometimes you're frustrated, sometimes you're furious, sometimes you're irritated, and you know, sometimes you're very skeptical. You're operating in this realm. You see what you also do when you're sad. You see what you do when you're peaceful, when you're powerful, when you're joyful, when you're scared. Now, what we ask people is, it's always good to have a vocabulary to how you are feeling. That helps you to express yourself. Have a, a lot of people just know they don't feel good, but they can't put words to what to how they're feeling. Always see. Ask yourself, anytime you act in a particular way, ask yourself, what is it I'm feeling right now? So instead of, you know, just being, you know, irritable or something, you are able to say, tell yourself, I think I am really mad now. And what do you do? Go out, take in breath, take a walk or do something until you're able to you know, recover so you don't speak words from that situation. Or when you're very sad, you don't speak words from that situation. Take care of it. I need you to know, okay, what am I feeling right now? Always know per time how you're feeling because that's the only way you can redeem yourself and save yourself and save the people around you. Don't push your feeling onto others. If you're mad, don't push it on people. If you're sad, don't push it on people. If you're scared, don't push on people. Deal with it because that is your baggage. Don't try to infest people. Angry people want to make other people angry. Hurting people want to hurt others. Why do you want to do that? It's selfish because you don't like the way you feel, so you want every other person to feel that bad. Deal with your own issues, deal with your baggage so you don't extend it to people. The question I ask of people always is when they're talking about office, I ask them, Are you mad? Why? Because when you're mad, you say hurtful things and hurt other people. You look for that area that is so soft in their hearts and heat it. Especially things that you know are true. You bring in the past, something you've, done, you've talked about before, bring it to the present because you need to hurt them. I ask, are you sad? Why? Because it leads you to depression, making you very pessimistic. When you're sad, when people say you'll be okay, I'm, I won't be okay. I remember I was in the room one day with somebody and she's a believing God for kids. I just told her, I've been talking, all of a sudden I said, everything will be okay. Oh goodness. She got up from her seat and started yelling. What do you mean? Everything will be okay. I'm tired of people telling me everything will be okay. Have you ever lost a child? Have you ever this? Have you ever done that? Because she was talking out of a depressed state. And now she wanted me to pay for it. And that's what we do. When we are scared, we start acting insecure. That's why we monitor people everywhere. It's because we are afraid of being alone. We get so anxious and we get so clingy, very needy. Even if you're in a relationship, the other person cannot complete you. You have to be complete in God to be in a good relationship. If you're trying, if each time you're sad, it's because of the other person. There's something that's basically wrong with you as an individual. Nobody can give you joy. Nobody can make you happy. The only person that can make you happy is God. That is called codependency. Being addicted to a human being. Don't be addicted to a human being. You are you. You are an individual. You are complete. There's a lot you've got to offer. 
if your being happy is based on what somebody does and your being sad is based on what another person does, something is basically wrong somewhere. Find your joy in God. You can't give what you don't have. As long as you're sad, you multiply sadness in a relationship. But when you're happy, you also multiply it in a relationship. Always have what to give. It's more blessed to give than to receive. Give hope, give joy, and don't start looking at how to get it from other people because they are also depleted. They are also looking for how to be happy. A lot of people today having issues with their kids. Why? Because, you know, their kids doing well makes them happy. That's all they have. That's their hope. So they want to lead their life through the kids. It doesn't work that way. The kids will just get frustrated at some point and just throw their hands in the air and say, I've had it. I don't want to do this anymore. Let people be who they want to be and don't make them who you want them to be. If you're joyful, you also produce exciting and complimenting words. When you're happy in the morning, you wake up. That's why I said, I wanted to say that so you can tell yourself every morning, this is a day the Lord has made. Good things are happening to me today. And so it's easier for you to see people through a clear lens. You compliment people. You're excited. Because you are excited, you get excited when you're talking. You can't give what you don't have. So make it a responsibility to have it. So you're able to give others as well. You see, they're doing good things. They may be doing a little one bad thing and be doing, you know, five good things. A lot of times we magnify the bad and we downplay on the good. Because we have issues in us. But if you're good and you're excited, it's easy to see, oh, this is good. Did you just do that? Oh, thank you. Did you say that to me? I like when you say that to me. You just see good things in what people are doing because you yourself, you're good. Do you feel powerful? It makes you protective in a very humble way. See, powerful people are very humble. When you see someone that has a control issue, is insecurity. They feel it's it's inferiority complex. It's almost is always trying to monitor you and control you. They lack power. Powerful people, you find that people that are into martial arts, they have a fight. Because they know they will kill you. So they make sure you even if you're trying to provoke them, they run. They know they're powerful. If I have that's why it's it's easier for People, in an abusive relationship, you have more of women that are, are getting abused than men are. Because the men are more powerful, I mean strength-wise, but it's actually insecurity. When you want to exert your power. You know, in those days, you usually tell men, when they come for counseling, and the woman says, you beat me, I'll say, why are you beating her? Go find another man to beat. They will beat you to a pulp. It's not because you know you can use your power here. That's why you're doing it. But it's not because the man feels powerful. It's because the man feels powerless. When you feel powerless, you want to haze. You want to do something. Children that are you know, bullying people in school, they feel powerless. That's why they try to control. They have inferiority complex. They need to do something to prove to themselves that they have power. People that are really powerful don't need to prove anything. They are humble. When you feel at peace, you're thankful. You're loving. You're nurturing. So whenever you don't know how to be thankful, you've lost your peace. Find that peace. God gives peace if you ask him to. He gives peace. He gives a peace of mind. He makes you do you know things in a way that makes the world a better place your home a better place get up every day and put in good stuff into your heart don't leave your bed if you have not said good things to yourself don't get up without reading the bible or listening to motivational tapes find people you can listen to I listen to people, different people, every day. In the past, like 
two weeks I've been listening to Les Brown. And anytime I see something good, I'll post it to people. You need to listen to this. It just gives me power, makes me powerful, makes me feel I can do anything. When you keep having those things in your heart, positive words, people are speaking into your ears, you avoid bad news. People can sit down on CNN 24-7. You are dead meat. If all you're listening and hearing is how people are dying, you're putting fear into your heart and your life. And you know what? When you're fearful, you want to make other people scared. People say things to other people because they want to share the fear with people. Run away from stuff like that. It, it, that's your body liability. Listen to good things. The good news. I told somebody, have you ever sat down with news and you hear that, oh my God, somebody, you know, people gave birth to this and, you know, somebody's getting married. and I, No, because it doesn't sell. That kind of news doesn't sell. What sells is we just found a dead man behind a store. That's what sells. Because they know that's what you want to listen to. But you know what? Deliver yourself and run away from stuff like that. Relationships, if you have a relationship that after talking you don't feel good, cut it off. You don't need it. Friendship is by choice, not by force. People should not choose you. You choose them. If you don't deposit life into me, I'll run away from you. For my sake, for my own sake, and for the sake of people around me. Because if you deposit something wrong in me, I'm going to share it with my family. I will start posting it. I tell, I warn people, don't post nonsense to me. The fact that you saw something that, you know, gets you scared. You now want to post it so that I can also be scared. Don't post nonsense to me. There are certain people that if they post one, two, three things to me, I don't feel good, I block them. I don't want to receive that. Why? I need positive energy. And so do you. Any question?